Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Coming at you with 2021 Panini Donruss Optic Basketball. Half case, pick your team number 18. This is the second half of the case we popped open a little while back. So let's see what's been marinating in here. Remember I marked all these 18 so you know they're from the same case. Big thanks to everybody here for getting in on the action. I think we've got a few people in this break watching live this late at night, so I appreciate it. Is that, I, I guess, jacked up must be Larry. He's, he's asking for some Luca gold vinyl one time. All right, all right. I know Oliver is here. He's looking for Kenyon Martin Jr.'s. Uh, I guess King is wondering if there's any good Nuggets players here. I'm going to find some Nuggets players in here. Is Capazzo a Nugget? Maybe. All right, well, anyhow, thanks for staying up late with me on a Monday night nonetheless. And then we'll do that uh, Monday night football randomizer at the end. There's a lot of money to be given away after this break. This break shouldn't take very long. It's only like a 30-minute break or so. We'll go a tiny bit faster than, than usual just because of the hour. But yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah, oh, Zeke Naji is there, RJ Hampton. So there's, I mean, nothing... Nuggets don't have anyone that's going to light up the hobby at the moment. But I think people like Capazzo a lot. Zeke Naji gets minutes here and there. But so far, kind of fringy sort of guys that with, with potential upside. I've got a feeling, I don't know about you, I don't know what basketball fans think, but I've got a feeling that guys like Zeke Naji or Capazzo maybe even R.J. Hampton are going to be kind of one of those guys that maybe they maybe they won't find success as a nugget, but maybe if they move on or if they get traded or something like that, that they will like flourish, possibly flourish on another team elsewhere given the, given the opportunities and the minutes. I don't know which one of those guys, but I just kind of get that sort of feeling. You know, because basketball's weird. Like, like for a lot of, I mean, these are kids coming out of the league when they're like seven, when they're 18, 19 years old. So sometimes, you know, look at this guy. Sometimes they, they don't, they're not superstars year one. You know what I mean? Even though the, even though the raw talent is there, you know, they're not going to be superstars year one. And sometimes teams like the Lakers need guys like him to be superstars year one and it doesn't work out you get traded but now he's doing great for the pelicans there's darius garland to 59 so there's some of that going on that's for the Cavs. that's going to go to jonathan and cleveland Vernon Carey Jr., Lime Green to 149. Let's see if we can uh, find his teammate. Now, what's great about sets like this, which is still technically last year's draft class, the LaMelo class is last year's draft class, guys like Cole Anthony now really start to look interesting in their second year. Look, look up Cole Anthony's numbers. Orlando Magic, Walt. Walter with the Orlando Magic. Last spot, Mojo gets the Cole Anthony rated rookie hollow. There's Anthony Edwards, number one overall pick. Sean Maddock got the T-Wool straight up. There's Kawhi to 99. So I'm sure that Cole Anthony hollow has been going steadily going up in value. There's Devin Vassell. I've always been saying Vassell, but I think I saw a broadcast where, where the announcer was saying Vassell. Either way, there's Devin for Larry. It's Obi Toppin, the rookies. Cole Anthony looking at his stats. So they've played about... Yeah, his last game against the, today, I guess tonight against the Timberwolves, 
38 minutes, 31 points, 6 of 11 from 3, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals and a block. So he puts a handful of games together like that. There's Lou Williams to 199. Even the game before that, 15 points, 3 for 4 from the from 3, 10 rebounds, 3 assists. Game before that, 24 points, 5 of 6 from 3, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Game before that, 24 points, 2 for 7 from 3, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, a steal, so on and so forth. So like what's the what's the what's the upside of a of a guy like that? I mean, kind of those numbers but consistently? I mean, he's a I actually kind of don't know. He's a point guard. Technically, he's a guard, right? I mean, I like guards getting 5 plus rebounds a night. Against the Knicks, he had 16 rebounds. Do you love 6-3 guards getting rebounds like that? I do. Is that stat right? Am I looking at the right Cole Anthony? I think so, yeah. On October 24th versus the Knicks, he had 29 points, 16 rebounds, 8 assists, and a steal. I like that. I mean, I mean, I think maybe I just talk myself into immediate top load for this hollow here. All right, second box. Yeah, the Magic themselves probably playing some decent basketball. I mean, they've got some players, right? On that, sorry. Now I know I'm supposed to be doing this break, but now I'm just getting distracted by, by. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Orlando Magic Talk. Hey, listen. We'll, this is not. This is not like ESPN, where all they talk about is. Uh, Ben Simmons and LeBron James. Listen, I hear enough Laker talk <laughs> around here in LA. Um, so I'm happy to talk about other teams. Um, yeah, Cole Anthony at point guard. RJ Hampton actually backing him up. There's Jalen Suggs as a more of a shooting guard. Franz Wagner. That's Mo Wagner's brother. They got Wendell Carter. Mo Bamba. They still have Chuma Okiki. Wait, is Mo Wagner on that team too? They got his brother, so the brothers are playing together. I really, I didn't realize that Moritz Wagner and Franz are on the same team. So they got some players. They got, they still have Terrence Ross, Michael Carter Williams. They still have Markel Fultz on the. Oh, Walt's like, shut up, Joe. Don't tell everyone how good he is. Walt's trying to snag all those Cole Anthony's before, uh, <laughs> before the price starts going up even more. But if you get a healthy Markel Fultz back from his injury last year, I mean, that's at least depth. And you know, as a former number one overall pick, he's got some, some upside. We've got some veteran players and Robin Lopez on that team. I don't know. I mean, and a weak East. I mean, what's not to like about about upstart team like the Orlando Magic who... You know, who certainly have some uh, some history, you know, some basketball pedigree. You know, and while, uh, you know, and while the, like the Sixers are possibly imploding before our very eyes. Nico Mannion to 199 and a base Tyrese Halliburton. I think do all card ship in this? I'm certain they do. Yeah, all card ship in this, so. And obviously all the rookies are gonna ship. I can't sleeve and top load every ro rated rookie as we go along, but I'll try to catch some highlights here and there. Yeah, hey, listen, Oliver Soria, who's a local here, but a Kings fan, a Sacramento Kings fan, we'll, we'll get into some Kings talk around here too. There's Joe Ingles, three out of 99. And John Collins, one out of 10 Dominators autograph. Really like John Collins' game. That goes to Alifonso. And Atlanta, I really like Atlanta as a team as well. Nice low number on that out of 10. 
There's Jingles. Rated rookie Kira Lewis Jr. and a Harrison Barnes, 147 out of 149. Speaking of the Kings, that goes to Robert, who got the Kings randomized to him in the filler. There's Pascal Siakam, 20 out of 99 for Justin and the Raptors. Brandon Ingram to 99 for Nollins. Really like uh, I've always liked his upside. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna happen, but someone to keep an eye out. Rate the rookies hollow for Larry and the Wizards. Nice. Yeah, we'll do a little Kings talk, Brad. Well, yeah, Oliver's been a Kings fan since 1985. Well, I don't know what's up with the Bagley situation. I feel like the Kings also have a good team on paper that really just needs to... They put a couple things together, I feel like. Bagley's going to get dumped somewhere. Yeah, I feel like something's going to... I don't know. But you look at that team, it's like, it's like what's not to like? You see De'Aaron Fox, Davion Mitchell, Tyrese Halliburton, Harrison Barnes, you know, Maurice Harkless, Rashawn Holmes, Alex Len. So there's a little bit of size there. Yeah, they got to figure out what, what Marvin Bagley, what they're going to do with some, some sort of extra, extraneous pieces. Maybe they could improve the team, make a little noise. Jack Dub is asking, you think uh, you think Zion comes back the same player? That's up to Zion, right? I think he does. I mean, I think I think I think he could still probably carry whatever weight he has, and I'm sure he's off, he's been off his feet foot literally. So I know that he's that that's probably a little bit he's going to need a little conditioning time, but I think he's going to be fine. I don't think anyone's worried about like the short term. But I think people are worried about the long term. You know, I think short term, he's, he'll probably rattle off, you know, a few a few great seasons. Even, you know, even at whatever his rookie year playing weight was, you know. He could even probably carry a couple LBSs, extra LBSs, and be okay. And probably not, not even okay. I'll bet he'd be great. I'm sure of that. For you know, another three, four seasons or something like that. But is great enough for someone of Zion's talent? So I think that's the, that's the thing. How, how hard does Zion want to work on his conditioning? How long does he want to stay in the league? You know, I mean... Like, for all these players, these guys are all the best in their high school classes, best in their colleges. There's only so many people that get drafted into the NBA. These, these starters are the best of the best of the best basketball players in the world, right? Even the worst starter in the NBA is, you know, probably the best in their hometown. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it requires, like, hard work. This guy puts in the work. It requires just a little hard work. I think everyone's heard the Charles Barkley story, right? Where I think it was like Moses Malone, you know, had said to Charles Barkley, it's like, hey, man, you're going to eat your way out of the league. You got to, and that really stuck with Charles Barkley. And you could kind of argue that Zion and Charles are similar sorts of players. So if Zion can, can kind of figure that out, get it into his head, what he's got to do to, to be successful in the league and to be sustainable in the league, be in the league for a while. He's got to work. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, James Wiseman, uh, rated rookie hollow autograph. Alifonso with the Golden State Warriors. This guy just marinating in these cases. I, hey, listen, I'm willing to give Zion willing. I don't, I don't know him personally, obviously, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a young kid. He's got a big future ahead of him. He's got to figure it out. You know, don't. I mean, don't you think everyone is in his ear about his weight? <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet friends, family, everyone on in, all, everyone on social media, blah blah. blah everyone he knows. <laughs> he knows. You got guys on TNT. They're talking about everyone. Say. You know, like, yeah, yes. It's, he's hearing it from Cydrus. Zion needs to lose that weight ASAP. He's hearing it from everybody. He knows. He hears it. I'm, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because... I don't know, that foot injury, I mean, may, maybe he just kind of has a body type where, or if he's off his feet for a little bit, kind of, you know, the metabolism, whatever his metabolism, kind of catches up with you quickly, so maybe he adds those pounds on pretty quickly. So let's see, I, well, that's a scary thing. You've never seen a 300-pound dude jump that high, right? <laughs> that's what Mark's saying, yeah. I mean, and I'm not saying he has to be like, you know, like skinny. You know, like I'm sure he's used to playing at a certain size. That's what makes him the player that he is. But, you know, he doesn't have to have like DK Metcalf type body fat, you know, but, but yeah, exactly. Like, like a Barkley, Oliver, exactly. But even Barkley had to kind of watch that weight for a little bit so he's not out of the league in like, you know, eight years because his, his, his knees are shot. How tall, oh, so yeah, Barkley, 6'4", 280. How tall is Zion? Zion's got to be a little bit taller than that, right? Zion's a couple inches taller, 6'6". Six, six. That's what Google says. 6'8", Oliver saying? He's around there. There's DeMontis Sabonis to 199 for the Pacers. So, I don't mind him playing big. He just can't. You know, he just got, has to just be be conditioned oh, in a way. All right, man, I'll see you. It's Jason Tatum to 49 for the C's. That'll be for Robert. There's a hollow Isaiah Stewart. He's got some upside, too. That entire Pistons team has upside. And Jerry West? Wow. I think I pulled a Jerry West autograph in the uh, basketball mixer we just did. Back-to-back -back breaks, back-to-back -back Jerry West, little Laker Joe Mojo, Matt Lieber with the Lakers. The logo. Now, I, I do not remember how high could, could Chuck jump. I mean, he is the mound, the, the round mound of rebound. It's Michael Porter Jr. Lugans Dort to 149. But yeah, but I think, uh, you know, I think Oliver mentioned it a little bit earlier. I think, uh, there he is. I think um, it's a 6'7", 284 right there. I think he'll figure it out, right? I mean, especially when it comes to when it comes down to, hey, 
this is also going to affect your pocketbook. You know, this is going to affect your checking account. And you're, you're about to leave all this money on the table because of X, Y, Z. I think you'll be like, okay. Is that Collins to 149? Is that right? Jacked up saying, Jack is saying Barkley's funny that he couldn't palm a basketball at small hands. All right, two boxes to go. We're almost there. We're making some pretty good time. We should be done in about another 10 or 15 minutes here. And then we'll run that randomizer for the big giveaway. I feel like there needs to be a good Charles Barkley documentary. How come we have not seen that? I mean, I guess Charles would have to be the one signing off on it, but I don't know. Maybe maybe he's just not into doing that. But I, I just feel like I feel like <laughs> I feel like a lot of people kind of look at Charles Barkley, and you know, myself included, as sort of more for his personality. And him being on TV, and sometimes forget how ferocious of a player he he was, you know. And he's kind of like the, you know, like an old uncle or a or a grandpa type on 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 inside the NBA. Yeah, yeah, and Shaq gives them a hard time for the no rings and all that sort of stuff, but but when they when you when they talk seriously, like you can see how much respect they have for Charles Barkley as a player. Patrick Williams, I forget which wrist it is, but get well soon. Kira Lewis Jr., 56 out of 99 for Larry and the Pelicans. There's Patrick Williams again, 28 out of 79. Pink Velocity, Bulls, Sean Maddock. And then R.J. Hampton, Denver Nuggets. And that's for uh, for King, B King in the chat. Joined the filler, got randomized the nuggets, and ends up with a little ink. Precious Achua for the Heat, 108 out of 149. Miami, Mike with Miami. Got a nice orange Zion, 140 out of 199. I think some of these second year Zions, especially the parallels, you know, can do okay on the secondary market. Go to Larry and the Pelicans. I don't know. I, haven't, I don't think we've seen a single one, right? We've seen two hollow Peyton Pritchards, though, for the Celtics, Robert. Maybe they're in the last box. Oh, 
Are the Rockets an interest? Speaking of Kenyon Martins, are the are the Rockets an interesting team that, that we're looking looking at here? Are they gonna? Where's John Wall gonna go? Is he gonna get traded? No, Mark doesn't believe in the Houston Rockets. Yeah, is he untradeable? Is he even playing? So what are they doing with it? He's just sitting around? I liked... Kevin Porter Jr. was okay for them last year. They got Jalen Green. They got Jay Sean Tate from last year. They were actually pretty good until I think Christian Wood really balanced out that offense last year. And they were playing really well until Christian Wood went down with an injury. And they've got, got guys like Kenyon Martin Jr. as well. But yeah, I remember, I remember last year, Wood was kind of a, they really balanced out that lineup. And once he went down for an extended period of time, they, they like, then they started dropping a lot of games and they kind of slipped out of possible playoff conversation. So is John Wall just sitting around? I, he's not, I don't even see him on the Rockets depth chart. I guess maybe they'll wait until the uh, maybe they'll wait until the trading deadline. If they can't find a partner after that, they'll just they'll just start playing him. I mean, is he practicing with the team? Is he traveling with the team, or is just like, or are they just saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna work out a trade for you. You just hang tight. Don't get injured." Please, God, don't get injured. All right, last box, ladies and gentlemen. Rated rookie, hollow Nico Mannion. Blue Steve Adams to 59. Here's a base lamello ball for the... Uh, for the Hornets. And that'll be for Sean Maddock and Charlotte. Thomas Bryant, three out of 79 for the Wizards. Larry and Washington. Here's LeBron. And Tyrell Terry is your rookie auto for the Mavs. It's also for Larry. Picking up the Dallas Mavericks straight up. I still have not found that uh, that cold vinyl Luca for you. Here's an All Stars Luca. There's still still a shot. Still a little little stack left. Brandon Clark. You got the Jameis Ramsey orange, 62 out of 199 for the Kings. It's going to be for Robert. And a green. Five out of five, Brandon Ingram. Former Laker. That's for Matt Lieber and the Los Angeles Lakers. Five out of five. Fives and under. Get the train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. Got a lime green Lori Markin and who's actually been playing pretty good ball in Cleveland, or I think he's in Cleveland now. But this goes to Chicago, that'll be for Sean. And the last little bit here. We got a Zion Williamson lead dominators hollow, Jimmy Butler, Peyton Pritchard, and Dilo D'Angelo Russell. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen.
There you go. Uh, pa oh, sorry. Larry with the Pelicans. Larry. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. It's late. That's for the Pelican. That's for you, Larry. Not for Matt. Sorry, Matt. False alarm. There you go. Yeah, this is nice. Nice James Weissman here. Some Anthony Edwards. Hollow Cole Anthony. Etc. 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 Thanks for watching, everybody. It's late. I gotta get out of here. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.